Hello everyone. Uh, we continue our journey with the quantum computers. Please watch my previous video where I gave introduction about what is a quantum computer, what is a classical computer, what are the components of classical computers. In today's video, I'm going to talk about why do we need quantum computers. Let's jump into that. So we have the quantum computers now. It all started with the atom in the universe. I'm going to try to link from atom how we came to quantum computing. You need to understand what is an atom. So I'm going to give a model brief explanation so you can understand the quantum computers better. Quantum supremacy, supreme means extreme level. So nowadays all companies are building a computer to reach the quantum supremacy. That means that's a level or milestone where it's much better than the classical computers. If something cannot be done in classical computers or very slow, this will achieve it. Quantum computers, that is the supremacy. In a previous video I explained about on and off, you know. It's all electric current. Either it's connected or not connected. The light is on or off. Magnet language, you can say magnet is up or magnet is down. It's all chip circuit, motherboards and chip circuits. Quantum computing is from derived from quantum mechanics. How mechanics is related to quantum. There are logic gates and or not. Everything is linked, I always say. These and or not are in all the programming languages. C, Java, C++, Java, JavaScript. Everything has the logic gates. How it works is it has sensors. These are some applications of quantum mechanics. Science, physics, medical nursing to create new drugs, medicines, better drug design. Sensors, clocks, design, biomedical instruments, computer chips, motherboard can be made much better using quantum mechanics for PCs and laptops. Here I talk about the classical on off bit. Let's move on to the atom, basic atom model. Everything is derived in the universe by atoms. This is a basic model. It has three things, you know, protons, positive charge, electrons, negative, neutrons, neutral, no charge. So this is one atom. Let's see, uh, these are the electrons revolving around the nucleus of the atom which has protons positive and neutrons. This is called the nucleus of the atom. Let's come to this side in quantum world, on or off, at the same time. It's called the superposition of the qubit, quantum bits. When you talk about classical, you talk about binary digits. Here you talk about quantum digits, qubit. And last video, I mentioned about quantum entanglement. So this is a qubit one. Each qubit is very powerful. Qubit 500,000. All the companies are trying to increase the number of qubits available in their computer. Right now it has 433 qubit is the current highest uh, qubits by some company, large company. Entanglement is all these things are linked. This is powerful, this is powerful. When all these things are linked using the and or not logic gates, quantum entanglement. That's the importance of how it works. Classical computers, atoms, atoms, molecules and compounds. Let's come here. We have to talk about another concept. You know about protons, electrons, neutrons. There's one more thing called ions. Two types of ions, cation and ion. Cation is positive ions. Anion is negative ions. What is an ion? Ion is one atom or group of atoms which has a particular charge, either positive or negative. If it's positive, cation. Negative means anions. All these ions, atom concepts are used in the quantum computing. For classical and quantum, mostly in quantum, since it's very powerful, it's used in data analysis simulations. It will do the computations very, very fast. That's the advantage of the, one of the advantages of the quantum computers. 
In the next video, I'll explain more about applications and other uses of quantum computers. Please watch the other videos too, you know. I have many videos for math, science, reading, space. Thank you. Hi, uh, today's video I'm going to talk about how, how to implement the quantum computers. Please watch my other two videos. First video I talk about what is quantum computers. Second one, why do we need quantum computers compared to the classical computers atom model. Here I'll explain how to implement quantum computers. This is a brief overview, you know. We use the concept of lithography, manipulate the atoms and ions electrons of the atom or use nano engineering using artificial atoms, superconductor circuits, chips, quantum gates. So what are the logical gates? Not and or quantum gate 1, quantum gate 2, quantum gate 7. These are like different gates interlinked by the logical gates, not and or. This is like a brief intro no? how it's implemented. So they have like a qubits chambers each one is a chamber, you know, quantum bit chamber. I start from number one, number two, number seven, quantum bit 10, 17, 22, quantum bit say 45. This is a 45 qubits computer machine. It's like all these things are nested. I put like squares here, but all, everything is nested inside and work together with the concept of quantum entanglement, different states, the zeros and one takes different states and are interlinked to each other. Each qubit is very powerful, much powerful than a classic computer. The lifespan of qubit is only 0.5 milliseconds. So we got to achieve what we want within the 0.5 millisecond of the lifespan of the qubit. What are the different uh, things used here for binary optimizations? Like classical computers, you have zeros and ones, like millions. You want to transport data faster, binary optimizations. Next is another level high, quantum teleportation. Teleportation is to send something from one place to another. Here we talk about digital. For example, from Earth, we want to send message to Pluto and get the message replay fast. We, we can use the future quantum computers. In a few years from now, we should be able to communicate even with satellites like Voyager 1, Voyager 2. The technology is advancing, you know, with a very powerful quantum computer. It might happen in five years or 10 years. I talked about uh, the future plan for quantum computers will be, see, this is only 0.5 milliseconds. They're trying to increase the time so we can use, make use of it more. Increase the quantum states, time length, the 0.5 milliseconds I'm talking about. Classical computers, classical processes, processors actually. What kind of motherboard is used in classical computers is different from what processors are used in quantum processors, quantum computers. That's what I'm trying to differentiate. Classical computer, classical processors. Quantum computers, quantum processors. That's the heart of the any computer. These are some technology used to achieve the quantum processor high speed. Trapped ions, topological qubits, superconductor circuits. I have explained a little bit about these. Future videos I will talk about what is trapped ions, topological qubits. How to maintain this supercomputer is almost equal to absolute zero. You have to maintain the uh, supercomputer. It will be like a really big size. So to maintain it cool all the time, the room has to be cold, everything inside has to be cold, otherwise it will not work. Uh, they have to make sure that there is no electric or magnetic interference with the quantum computer because it might change the state of the quantum, zero or one. This is a brief intro about how to implement the quantum computer. Just an introduction, you know. Please watch my other videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.